we talk of having uh, a marais built in the city. Too or, many marais. Um, yeah, too many marais yeah. together. That, you know, we've, there's a fear of being swamped by the marais. And so you have this very strong fear. Whenever there's a group of marais together, then this is bad. I mean, we have gangs of white people. We have Rotary, JCs. These are just gangs. Lions. Their standards, their, their ideals, the, the, the reasons for being, for them existing, may be different. But they are white gangs. We hear a lot about Otara. We hear a lot about Porirua, Ponsonby and Grey Lynn, that these are the brown suburbs, the ghettos. We hear very little about the white suburbs of Rimurera, of Karori, which sociologically are probably twice as bad, or equally as bad, probably a lot worse than these suburbs that we've been talking about. Mm. and which come in for all the abuse. Yet, Danny, I think you believe that <coughs> the gang serves a good sociological purpose. It can do. First and foremost, you must remember that these young people have got together because they need to be, get, need to be together. It's a spontaneous thing, isn't it? That's right. Yes. I mean, th th this, is, this is Polynesian, this is Maori, uh, this is Melanesian, but it's not European. It's always a very subtle difference. I wonder if we could go on to another subject now. Um, I wonder, just before that. Yes, John. Um, your comments suggest to me that un underlying all of this thought, this feeling, there's a definite Andy Parkhouse feeling. Now, I, I take it that this is a feeling shared by a large proportion of young Maori people. I wonder whether in view of the case that we say that in, in a few years' time, in f for quite a length of time, Sid, you said there will, there will still be a large proportion of Maori people. You, on the other hand, Toto, and Toto said that there's this intermarriage. Certainly we accept, accept that intermarriage must go on. I wonder, actually, whether we are glossing over race distinction for social distinction in some cases. Well, no. uh, <laughs> we'll get back to your first point that you brought up about uh, suggesting possibly we are anti parky I don't think so. It's the same way that I'm uh, anti-American insofar as I'm anti-Uncle Sam and the government and everybody else. But a lot of the American people I think are very fine people. And the same goes for, um, for the Parkia, it's the institutions and uh, the consequences that they have sort of uh, instigator that, that I am against. Um, social discrimination, I've heard this one before. Yeah. Yes, I think this anti, anti Maori, I don't think the feeling is so much anti Maori, as the fact that society, or anti Parker, that our feelings are anti Parker, so much as the fact that the society is anti Maori. But the social discrimination, I think, is the, the rationalisation of the racism which, which exists in the country that people say, no, it isn't really racial discrimination, it's social discrimination. Mm. I take but you it can then that, uh, well, we're all Maoris here, um, you would accept any Maori. We'll say into your home, if you, well, if, if we were in um, some position of responsibility in employment, we would accept any Maori. Because quite, quite frankly, there are some Maoris I would not accept as a social equal. I accept people. <laughs> I accept people, whether they're Maori or Pākehā, and I don't think this is done often enough against Maoris. In my particular job, where I am employing people, I have made it a cardinal rule to myself, and I would admit this to, to my managing director too, that any Maori, if a Maori and a Pākehā came in for a particular job, and the Maori wasn't quite as good, as a Pākehā, that he would get my vote, that he would get the job. Because I would know, and this is based on experience, that a Māori in, in many other circumstances, who was just a little bit better or equally as good, would not get the job. So anything that I can do in my small capacity to even the balance, I can justify because of this. Well, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, now I get down to this point of industry again. Have we got an equal deal? Sid, you're, you're in a position. Uh, to tell me this. Have we got an equal deal? We've, we, we've got farming, that's a washout. We've had it. Because it does go back to education, doesn't it? That's right. But what about industry? How good is the deal? This is something the European has given to us here. Yeah, industry. Right. 
This is the scene, man. This is right. This is particularly bad. I think the freezing industry is probably the classic example. <laughs> Let's look at one particular freezing works in Auckland, where the proportion of Polynesia, the proportion of the Polynesian workforce, or the Polynesian workforce, constitutes 60% of the workforce. There isn't one Maori supervisor in this particular freezing works. Not one Maori foreman. Uh, the rationalisation for this is that three or four years ago, they actually tried, <coughs> management tried in their benevolence, to train one Maori for a supervisory position. But the pressures on him were so great that in the end he withdrew. And they use this as a rationalisation. While well, we did try three or four years ago, but typically, just as we expected, he fell down and wasn't able to accept responsibility. Yet they failed to, to realise that a great proportion of trade unionists in this particular freezing works are Maori or are Polynesian, that they are prepared to accept responsibility, that they are prepared to work. But, of course, the rationalisation is that they're not because this is what is convenient to them. To them. Yeah.